Hi everybody, this is the video for the second week of SCI 150, just showing you a few things that uh, I found that people are awesome, you can go on YouTube and find this video, and uh, it's, it's kind of amazing, uh, but uh, because we're talking about biomechanics this week, I thought just thought I'd show you some of the things that people can do with their bodies, uh, and uh, how you should be uh, learning to observe the movements of people, that's what uh, the focus is for today. So we'll go back to the syllabus, and you'll see that for this week, it's fundamentals of biomechanics. So what we're going to do first is remember that you can go on Blackboard, and you can go on the textbook and click on textbook, and you'll get the textbook. And here's chapter two. So let me tell you what uh, the, per the basic purpose is of this chapter. It's just learning the fundamentals of biomechanics. What the heck does that mean? And also qualitative analysis. Qualitative analysis means that you use your eyes and your senses, if you have the senses, to observe movement. <clears throat> it's going to be part of your job as an occupational therapist to observe people's movements. If you've ever been to a chiropractor, sometimes one of the first things that he or she does is ask you to walk across the room and they'll just look at your uh, your gait, they'll look at the way that you uh, move your arms and, uh, and your legs in the, in the same order. So this is what the qualitative analysis is. Quantitative analysis means that you're using numbers, data that's more specific that you can measure. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But the focus of this week will be for you to start observing people's walks and maybe analyzing your own as well, because you'll be doing that as an occupational therapist. So in this chapter, here are some of the important things that uh, I'd like you to look. You can read the chapter or you can just focus on some of these things. Now, it's going to be on mechanics. So that's part of the word biomechanics. And this is the section, uh, actually, this is the paragraph that uh, is kind of important. So this section here, and it's the branch of physics that studies the motion of objects and the forces that cause that motion. Anything that you do is a has been done by a force acting on it, whether it's your, in your own muscles acting on your body to move your body out of a chair or across a room, or you're being uh, driven in a car and the car's engine is moving you, that's a, a force. So this rigid, rigid body, mechanics, deformable body, mechanics, and fluids. Now, rigid bodies, I'm going to show you what they have here. Rigid body is when you have a straight. Now, in, in, in physics, not biomechanics, but in physics, rigid body would be like a piece of metal. If you take, ever take a course in uh, statics, which means that things are not moving, rigid bodies would be like bridges or buildings. So that's the, the large picture. But here are some um, examples of the rigid body mechanics. Statics, just holding a handstand here. And then there's dynamics. Dynamics means that there's motion. Okay, there's kinematics. You can see this here. We'll talk about that more. And kinetics. So there's the kinny uh, prefix. Okay, so that should be something that looks uh, that makes sense. Fluid mechanics, in, in physics, pure physics, fluid mechanics means the motion of air or uh, gases or liquid. And uh, in fact, uh, if you're talking about the rivers and river flowing, that's fluid mechanics. If you're talking about the air current uh, around a plane's uh, wing, uh, that's called fluid mechanics as well. So this is the uh, this is this page 24 here or something to look at, and it tells you exactly what I've been through here. But the picture has a better uh, idea. The basic units we'll go over in class, uh, but uh, and the difference between scalars and vectors. If you've ever taken a physics course, this may sound familiar. If not, uh, then there'll be something new. But in the mass, we talk about 20 ki uh, kilograms. Actually, just kilograms are the units. And speed is miles per hour, but it might be uh, kilometers per hour or kilometers per second if you use the metric system. And we'll talk about kinetic energy, which is the energy due to an object's motion and momentum. That's an object's continuing motion after the forces have been put away. So if you're riding your bike and you're coasting, then that's momentum. If you're pedaling, that's kinetic energy. 
uh, well, actually, it's the energy from your muscles into the pike, and uh, there's some momentum as well if you're coasting, but there's also energy as well. So take a look at these, but we'll talk more about that in the next class. <clears throat> One of the things that I'll be stressing is that the object's weight, an object's weight is not the same as an object's mass. Okay, The object's weight depends on the gravitational force. If you've ever been in a car, drive, uh, riding probably, riding more in the back seat, and you're on a Sunday drive and dad went over this little hill and you were sort of elevated for a split second, it was that odd feeling. That was the feeling of weightlessness. You can also feel that when you're in a roller coaster and it's going up and you have that uh, feeling that you're going to continue going up. It means that there's no gravitational force acting on you, so you're at that point, you're really weightless. Of course, weightlessness is found in, a, in, in people who spend time in space stations or in a space shuttle. They were, they were weightless because there was no ma a gravitational force acting on very little. But they still had a mass. So we'll talk about the difference of that. We always have a mass. If you live on, in Lewiston, Maine, you'll have a certain weight and a mass. The different things. But if you go and move to Denver, which is a mile higher than Lewiston, practically, uh, the, uh, then you'll weigh less in Denver than you do in Lewiston because Lewiston is closer to the sea coast which is sea level and also but the thing is you will also have the same mass your mass doesn't change so the people in the space shuttle are floating around they still have a mass but they don't have any weight so we'll talk about uh, those differences as well <clears throat> the other thing about uh, for, there's a force that acts on objects so that's, uh, the, that's what we will talk about here so read this uh, paragraph and also read when a force acts on an object and causes it to rotate, it's called an angular uh, velocity or an angular rotation. It turns. That's called a torque. I talked about that in the first class. Difference between force and torque. These are the two types of forces that we experience in our lives every day, almost every moment, except probably when you're sleeping, but not when you're turning around or turning your pillow over. So these are some examples there. <clears throat> the... Um, Elasticity, you can do this on your own. I'll bring some rubber bands to class just so you, you can feel it. I'll also bring something that's a Hooke's Law apparatus so you can see what this means. A Hooke's Law, it's Robert Hooke, he's a physicist. Well, he's, he's not anymore, it's been hundreds of years. But it just shows that the, uh, the amount of tension or force on an object is proportional to the elasticity of the object. So, if, for instance, the elasticity of your car shocks or springs is determined by how tight they are and how much uh, compression there is. So if you, uh, you can find this in the spring of an old ballpoint pen. When you press the ballpoint pen, then you have uh, some type of elasticity. <clears throat> the principles and laws of biomechanics. You can read all this, but here it is right here. This is a great demonstration. For instance, balance, center of gravity. We're going to be talking about that as well. Inertia. An object that stays in motion will remain in motion. An object at rest will stay at rest. The range of motion, that's going to be one of the things we'll talk about in terms of observation this week. And you can see all the rest here. So these are the movement and projectile principles of biomechanics. You don't have to memorize them, but you should know them. Okay, And think about all the movements that you do that are based on these principles. The next thing, you can continue reading this, but I'm going to go down to this vertical jump. And it's just something we're going to do in class, so if you have some uh, non-jumping shoes or you don't want to jump, that's fine. We may find just one person and we can observe that person, but we'll do a vertical jump in class. So if you want to participate, wear appropriate uh, clothing. And here's the qualitative analysis. So read this section so you can see how you will be as an, as an OT or scientist to observe in terms of preparation. You observe, you evaluate and an intervention. In other words, if a person can't do, can't touch his or her toes, you observe that, you evaluate and intervention. So you find ways to remediate that problem. Then the uh, so we're going to be doing some uh, the the uh, summary you can look at, and then we're going to go in the, in the same book. If you look on page L four, this is lab number two. Okay, now lab number two has some tasks. You should read this section here. It might not be totally comprehensible at first, but this is what will help you. You're going to do an SRT. There's an SRT. That's a sit and reach test. There's an AKE, which is an active knee extension. And then there's the Schober 
test, a modified sober test. Now, what the heck does that mean? Well, here's an example. So I went to YouTube and just did a little bit of searching, and here's a sit and reach box test. So use a sit and reach box. Sit on the floor in front of your sit and reach box. Put your feet flush against the base of the board. Keep your legs straight but not locked out. Put both hands on top of the board and slowly lean forwards. Don't bounce, just allow yourself to reach and stop. Take the best reading. So that's the sit and reach test. There are different types. If you look at and you just Google it, I mean YouTube it, you'll see there are different types. So just be aware of how it, we, we don't have a sit and reach box here. The other thing that will be uh, examined that you should know is the active knee extension. So here's an active knee extension with a goniometry, a goniometer. And uh, she explains it. Heel propped <coughs> up on something. Your textbook shows how to. Your I'll uh, move function. it forward a bit, but you can look at this. So they measure the extension of the knee. So that's an, that's one a little bit more qualified, uh, quantified. Then the last thing is the modified shoulders. This is for the back agility and uh, or f f flexion. So you can read this as well. Shoulders test. So those are the things that we'll be looking at and it's in this section here. But the thing is, here's the second page of the lab and it's got a lot of these things here, but we don't have these instruments. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this on Blackboard under the course documents and we're going to do this on Monday. Working in a group, of, we're going to look at a vertical jump. There's the vertical jump and just look at some questions and specific questions and talk about this okay so we're going to look at a couple of different moves so you can come up with some moves it doesn't have to be it would not only vertical jump but something that people do every day okay and so this is one of those things that uh, we'll be doing on Monday and you can take a look at this this will be again on course documents and uh, well, we'll talk, we'll talk about more about these things. So, and uh, I'll also you know, a little assignment after Monday will be to look at a video film of human movement and just observe and write some general and specific questions. Because on the assessment for the course, it'll be something similar. I'll send you out and to do some of these things. This will be how well you can uh, question and just start developing an eye for observation. So that's basically the the material that you need to know for this week as I am going to finish with this again and I'll see you next class.